Hi, hello everyone, thank you for coming. And my name is uh, Johan Awang bin Osman. And I'm here to talk about uh, fundamentals of research, but in the context of creative works. How do you do research in relation to creative works? Because there are all kinds of research, a thousand million, million zillion, okay? Um, so this is more specific towards uh, uh, creativity. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explore, we, I'm going to talk about uh, what is research all about and how we do, how do we do it? And then what, what's the whole purpose of researching and why is it useful? And I'm going to show you an example from um, uh, uh, my, my thesis, actually based on my experience. Okay, so it's, I think best to talk about my experience in research, uh, but you do not have to apply directly uh, what I went through. Uh, but you're, you're uh, more than welcome to ask me questions about my experience. At the same time, uh, experience of other scholars or artists that have done similar works. Okay, so uh, essentially, we are going to talk about this idea, what we know as research, <laughs> which uh, interestingly have the word search in it, no? mencari. Okay, it's search, searching in it, it's researching. Um, just bear that in mind. Okay, so also uh, there is this idea of, um, you know, as artists, as composers, as musicians and all that. And, and in fact, you know, not in the art, but in the science too, there's this thing what we call to be inspired. You know, sometimes you say the word, uh, I'm inspired by. And actually, you know, come to think of it, what do we really mean when we say we are inspired by? I'm inspired by, let's say, um, uh, a Trita Donging. I'm inspired by uh, this book. I'm inspired by that painting. I'm inspired by that person. So what do we really mean when we say to be inspired by? Okay, so we are going to explore this a little bit more, uh, uh, what we mean by that. Okay, so um, I would also want to suggest that the idea of to be inspired, uh, try to subject inspiration to method. In other words, you need to, not you don't have to, but you can in a way uh, contextualize inspiration, put inspiration into the context of method. Okay, so inspiration is actually very subjective. I'm inspired by, <laughs> I'm inspired by chocolates. <laughs> I'm inspired by um, a space, uh, by emptiness. I'm inspired by Buddhism, let's say. So um, you can, it's okay to be inspired by, you can start from there, okay? Uh, when you want to do something creative, produce a creative work, and then subject it to, uh, to, a, to a method. It'll be very, very interesting. And I, I will talk about this uh, in a couple of slides later. Okay. So when we talk about research, usually, I mean, I, I spoke to Adeline last week also that um, uh, some have misunderstood research as in historical. <laughs> okay. Uh, it is fine. It is all right. No, research is also historical, but not in the conventional sense that, you know, it's history. Like sejarah minggu ini, those sort of things. So uh, we are going to talk about research beyond the historical, okay? And this idea, I'm going to demystify this idea of research. It's such a big word, grand word that everybody's afraid of. That because the academics, the academia only you know do they do research. But I'm going to just talk about research uh, as in beyond the academia, right? So uh, we all do research every day. If I want to speak colloquially in a very Blunt in a banal way, if someone's gossiping, actually, you are doing actually research. You find out who says that, who says this, who says that. You know, that's a form of research. When you are going to uh, buy something, you are going to Google. They mean you Google about something. It's a form of research. So, research has various forms or various levels or various spectrum of uh, intensity. You know, whether you are doing a very light finding out about something or, you know, you want to see which is the best place to eat the kuei tiao, you know, you also have to do a research. So we all do research every day. It's just that we do not use the word research. So I'm going to try to demystify this word research so that, you know, um, some of you who are, who assume you are new in research, don't have to be afraid of it, okay? So I'm going to sort of uh, also introduce the formal idea of what we call as research so that it's more user friendly to you all so that it's, it's not just research for the academics, uh, for researchers. Okay, moving on. So there is no one, uh, there is no one 
one particular correct research approach. There are many possible approaches. There is no one formula that fits all kinds of work, uh, working objectives. So in other words, you know, I'm going to give an example or a general example about research and approaches of research and what is research and why research today now. But it is not the way because in art, there is no uh, right or wrong. It's very subjective. It is a matter of which angle one takes uh, one look at anything. Okay, so the yellow circle in the academia and the field of academia is usually known as a phenomenal, okay, an event, a concept. It can be anything, it's right, the focus right in the middle. So uh, which angle you take, you know, you decide to look at the, that phenomenal, that object, that subject, whatever it is, uh, it is up to you. And then based on, you know, uh, um, which, your, which angle, which take you're most comfortable in, okay. So, Adeline, how am I going with the speed? Uh, is everyone, is this too fast, too slow? <laughs> I just I think to check. I think it's great. <laughs> Please continue. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I'm known to, to be speaking fast and, and I, I don't even know that I speak fast. Okay. No, it's fine. Uh, it's, it's fine. Good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, in general, okay, in general, secara arm, secara arm, you need. In the artworks, it's very good. Uh, this applies to artworks, okay, to cre creative works. Um, I've looked at many, many uh, um, artists, uh, whether they're novelists or, or book cover artists, or even composers or musicians, uh, when, when they want to come up with something creative. Okay, this is a general, general idea. The first thing is uh, to figure out your approach, your angle. Okay, I'll talk about this. What do you mean by figure out approach and angle? It's just like, you know, you want to go to Kuala Lumpur, which road you want to take, you know, or which transport you want to take, the plane, the car, the, you want to go by boat or you to walk. So it, you have to figure out what kind of approach. I'll talk about this later also. Okay, just bear with me. So from approach, you know, based on approach, a direction, uh, we start the research. Okay, without an approach, a direction, your research will be aimed, uh, without any aim. Okay, uh, from research, the outcome of your research, I mean, why do we do, most of us, once we finish our research, you put it aside, you put it on a shelf, you close the file, and you start composing. And then um, I've heard pieces whereby as an outcome of the research, the piece, the music, uh, or the artwork, and the research work is so disparate, they are not connected. I mean, they have researched about, you know, they've done a lot of extensive research, and then when it comes to the artwork, it does not in any way click to the research. So this is where whereby the research, the outcome, what do you do with the outcome of the research? That will be materials that you use to attempt on your creative works. So I put number one, number two, number three, dot, 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 mean that, you know, you attempt first time. Okay, it's always an attempt and, and re-attempt, re-attempt. So outcome of research is to apply to attempt uh, to, uh, uh, um, trials. And then you apply to the, um, I can't see that. What's the one in red? Um, the one in red is results. Yeah. Results, correct. Because yes. you're not blocking it. Okay. So uh, the, after attempt, that's the result. Okay. So this is the general flow of the um, of the of the um, uh, of the research process. Okay. So um, okay, Adeline, I will also put, um, send to you the file of my slide so that you can you know um, share it if you want if you want to. Yeah? Yes, please. Thank okay, you. So that okay. this can be notes for everyone. Okay. So moving on. Uh, another important, important uh, um, technique or, or, or ways of, of, of an, uh, researching, idea researching, is always ask questions. Asking questions. Ask, I mean, yourself that question to, uh, in order to provide directions. Okay, I'll give you an example about that. Um, so, some more about asking questions. Uh, why do we ask questions? So that we need, for example, one of the questions is, what is the focus relating to the subject object matter? Okay, so if I am picking a song, a folk song, so should it be the melody that I want to look into? Maybe I don't want to be too literal. You know, I don't want to go to melody. Everybody look at the melody. I want to go to the harmonic language. Or maybe not. I'm not going to focus on the harmonic, not going to focus the music aspect of the song, folk song at all. I'm going to focus on the probably the cultural aspect. Or I'm going to focus on the lyrics. I'm going to focus on the uh, on the text, okay, lyrics, and then I'm going to put my own melody to it, my own take on it. So uh, this is a so this is a question that you can apply to your approach. So my approach to my music composition is I'm going to take the lyrics and apply 
come up with a music to apply to the old lyrics. Just like taking the wine and putting it into a new bottle, old wine into a new bottle, okay? All right, for example, another example of a question you can ask yourself is how to premise the music on the elements, factors, objects, subject of the research. So, uh, so for example, if I have a focus, I want to focus on the lyrics, okay, of the, uh, of the, of, of the song, or the folk song. So, um, how do I have, you know, how do I take a factor of, uh, um, the, how do I base the music on, for example, the lyrics? How do I base the music on, for example, the cultural aspect of the song? How do I base the lyrics, I'm sorry, my music on the, um, on the, for the historical aspect of the song, or maybe on several elements, okay? Uh, if I take, for example, Cha Kui Tiao, okay, the food, let's say, I mean, it's quite interesting when you base some music on Cha Kui Tiao, let's say. Um, then, you know, how do I want to premise uh, my music on Cha Kui Tiao? For example, the focus will be, for example, I want to focus on the, the spices that has been used in Cha Kui Tiao, the way spice is used. Or maybe, 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 I want to focus on the gesture of cooking, the gesture of cooking Cha Kui Tiao, you know what I mean? Uh, it's a form of dance. Dancers, what they do is they can focus on the movements of the chakritya seller, take the most basic aspect of the movement, and then see how what aspect of the music can be premised on the movement. I I was I was working with the theater director uh, two years ago, and he devised he devised derived and devised movement for the actors based on everyday movements, and it becomes so profound. For example, the way Asians sit, we all squat down, you know, how Asian like to squat down and take the, the bowl of noodles, how, a, how the gestures, you know, Italian gestures, okay, uh, or, or Malaysian gestures, or the Indian gestures, you know, all these sort of gestures um, can be a sort of a music uh, element that can be uh, uh, um, derived and, you know, put in subjected to a motif in a dance or uh, of music, okay, that's another example. Another example is what specifics or general ideas can be derived to compose the, I can't see, to compose the, um, the, 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 the art. To compose the music. To compose the music, thank you. Yes. Okay. So what specific or general ideas? I put, um, for example, that uh, do, you, do, you want, do you want to use, for example, um, one factor, one element, or do you want to use several factors, several elements? Okay, so these are the questions that, Question help us to give us direction of how are we going to approach this composition through the research process, okay? Okay, some more question examples. Um, what musical elements will be based on the results of the research? So, okay, how, you do not get ideas when you are doing research, okay? You get sort of, sort of ideas. The ideas will come up after the research. So I will explain later on. Have an approach. Do your research. After the research, gather all the data, the materials, and look at the table and start to panic. Okay, which is okay. Um, and slowly, day by day, don't care. Don't don't have this. Uh, what do you call it? Um, um, uh, lo the lawyer. I call this as the secretary. The secretary just typing without even thinking. Just you know, take data, take information, take information. Don't think so much. After you gather the results of your research, based on the research, how do you turn your research into result? I will show you, okay? So result is not necessarily go and talk to someone, they tell you something, that's the result. No, that is not the result. That is so happen the raw, raw information you get from your research, okay? You have to turn the raw information into result, that's, which is very, very interesting. I'll show how. An isolated element or several elements. So do you want to isolate one element? Do you want to isolate just, when you're talking to, uh, I talk to a, um, let's say to a, to, a, to a coffee maker in Cavernon Street in, in Penang, okay? He makes coffee. If I speak to him, do I want to just focus on the inflection of his voice? You know, the way he tells me about the culture of making coffins? Do I want to go into the product itself, the coffin itself, you know? <laughs> I mean, as morbid as the theme is, but it is, it is still a cultural element, okay? So, or do I want to focus on the sound of coffee making? Okay, or the probably record, you know, sit down for like maybe um, one week and record all the sounds in the coffin, uh, a casket shop. 
you know that that can be can be one element i want to isolate just his speaking or i want to take you know several elements for example the entire shop plus the speaking of the people plus the environment outside you know the cacophony of the noise outside so it is up to you all right you want to be isolate isolate the element or or spread it out or expand it what aspects of the findings of the research will be used as my working premise okay so in other words um when you have done your research you get the result you can start to think about okay what you know you don't have to use everything you know that you have found you have gathered from the from from the from the world okay um you can you know you can hoard it up you know it'd be a gazillion of information and then that's where you start to sift things start to pick and choose what aspects you know um do you want to focus on this uh, aspect i mean which angle okay of the uh, of your findings okay now this is very 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 tricky your research questions the things that you ask the questions that you formulate to ask yourself has to somehow match the research objectives. What do I mean by research objectives? That means, for example, um, if I would like to find out about uh, the traditional games in Bali, okay, go to Bali. Oh, so let's go to Bali. There's so many places. Traditional games in in in, in Kedah. All right. Uh, what do kids play um, from the Chinese, from the Indians, from the Malays, or from the uh, indigenous? Of even from expats, what games do they play locally? Um, so that's my research object is to find out information about the cultural cultural context of the games. So my research question should be more towards that objective. You now, if I ask, for example, um, what 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 kind of food does the that kind of uh, um, 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 kampong people eat? Okay. That has nothing to do with my research objectives about the, the, the traditional games, you see? So this is what I mean by research questions have to match the objective. If I want to find out about traditional games of these particular villages, I need to ask questions related to the games, okay? All right. So when asking questions, um, about creative ideas okay when you're asking questions you need to think also about creative ideas and concepts uh ideas and concepts uh for example um creative ideas and concepts for example that uh okay i'm going to write for a choir piece choral, choral a choral piece a cappella okay so the concept should be uh oh it'll be interesting that i'm not taking from folk song it'd be so literal if i decide to take a folk song and turn it in the choir piece. Okay, that's fine, nothing wrong. But it's very, it's 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 quite conventional, you know, to base a choir choral piece on a vocal uh, uh, on a vocal vocal idea. So probably I will um I will try probably maybe to take a, a traditional games and see how I can um explore traditional game, the structure of the traditional game, or the gist, the essence of the traditional game. All the sign symbols in the traditional game somehow translate, convert it into uh, musical ideas that I can use to compose a, a, a choral piece, choir. So this is a little bit, um, I would say, uh, non-traditional, whereby you don't take non-conservative, you don't take voice works in order to convert it into a vocal piece. Okay, or you can take a, a, a traditional song and then write a piano piece. Okay, or you can take a traditional song and write a percussion piece, non-pitch percussion, okay? So it not necessarily have to be a literal connection between your questions and the creative ideas, okay? Moving on. So uh, you need to think about, when you're thinking about ideas and concepts, we can think about this thing, what we call as in the arts, huh? we call literal or figurative, metaphorical or symbolic, okay? So uh, you can, nothing wrong, go literal, meaning I am going to take a folk song and I'm going to arrange it for a choir, uh, choir uh, uh, a cappella, but it's going to be twelve tone like. It's going to be eight tone. No, somehow I'm going to I'm going to twist it around, bend it around, so that it's more it's it's speaking to a different language than the language of the people, of the commons. Okay, um, or I can go symbolic, metaphorically. I wrote a piece whereby um, the color, <laughs> or, or actually the white notes and the black notes, you know, represent um um. The opposite. Okay, Red, white represents purity and black represents corruption. And the note G represents God. The note D represents death. You no, know, those are symbolic uh, association that my music composition was derived was based on. 
But you know, it doesn't necessarily mean when you hear G, it means God. You know, sometimes, or you hear D, it means death. So that's too literal also. So I can even go more metaphorical. For example, perfect faith can represent the um, purity, pureness, and um, major second can represent uh, corruption. Okay, those are symbol symbolics of metaphorical or figurative ideas and concepts that I can use in my music based on the research work. Okay. Two kinds of researcher, two kinds of basic researcher you can go about, I mean, you can pick, you can go both ways also, okay? You can become an M, what they call the academia is the armchair researcher. And they can go, there's another research is go to the field researcher. Armchair researcher means you just sit in your room, Google, 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 okay? Read books, read books, read books, phone call, phone call, phone call, uh, and don't leave your room and, and that that's fine. And go to the field, meaning that, you know, you actually, you know, step out of your of your home and buy a plane ticket or drive to Kelantan or drive to Malacca and actually you know be in the space the area of your research object subject okay for example if you're doing this 14 states you decide to go to Sabah I mean those of you who you know um one can can it's okay fly to Sabah um and 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 be there when you do your research probably for a few days okay but uh, i can show you if you decide to go to the field what are the ways to go to the field to save time and, and money okay um method okay the the let me check my time okay so there are many 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 gazillion methods but i've just give the most 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 basic method and i put it in a in a very uh, um, 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 direct simplified term. Uh, when you're doing research, you are actually collecting information. Okay, don't be afraid that the word research consists of you know it's so technical, it's so academic. You know the the the, 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 the uh, intellects are applying theories. You know, so don't worry. Uh, research is not theoretically based all the time. I'm I'm saying all the time. Okay, so basically, method of researching is you know one of the most important thing. You're collecting information. How do you collect information? What way do you collect information? Observe, okay, through observation. Purely don't open your mouth, okay? Just, you know, um, sit, uh, watch a YouTube channel, watch a television show, watch a film, you know, watch a documentary about gassing. Uh, or you can actually fly or drive or walk to the kampong, the village, and sit down and see how the fishermen fish um, sit down with a bunch of um, um, uh, which, uh, kedahan machik, see how they gossip, how, how they talk to one another, you know, the way kedah gossip, the way the lingo lingo of kedah way speaking, sit down and observe how they speak uh, and, and, and don't interfere uh, or just watch, okay? Observation can be a one-time thing. You can go for two hours, one hour, maybe half an hour, or it can be a monthly thing. It can be like three months, one year, three years, four years, or it can be a weekly thing. Maybe um, I will go Monday every Monday, okay? Because the, the the activity takes place every Monday. Or I can just go for one hour and you know take observation. Also include um, video recording, uh, uh, sound recording, uh, not voice recording. Voice recording is already uh, categorized under interview, okay? So that's observation. Another way to collect information is talk to the people. Okay, this is very, very interesting. Undo ethno ethnocentrism. What is a is a big, big, you know, change word. You know, don't worry. Ethnocentrism means you know, ethno means people, centrism means center. You know, that means uh, undo this. This is a, it's not so good because uh, if you you know, if we tend to research without going and meet the people, we tend to have a lot of bias or uh, um, um, a lot of assumption or presumption what we think. Or what articles when we read articles or, or or any text that talks about that kind of people, the, the the people, and then we do not go and see for ourselves and speak to them ourselves, we might fall into the trap of making assumptions and presumptions. Okay, so this is what I mean by undo ethnocentrism. We think that, for example, ah, okay, I thought, I thought, but now after I do my uh, research when I talk to you. I got a different idea. Oh, I did not know uh, 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 Yong is uh, it's it's not it's not it's not royal performance. You know, I did not know Yong is actually the people's music. Oh, I did not know 
uh, my putri is actually, it's not a concert, it's actually a healing process. I did not know this. I, well, I did not see that way. Okay, so this is a way of, of, of undoing ethnocentrism and by talking to the people, going down to the field. You don't have to go down to the field, you can phone and call or video call if they have that, the means. But some people in, you know, when we're doing ethnic studies, okay, some, um, some section of the comments, the people do not have this technology, that means you need to uh, go, go in, depends on your, your topic of research, okay. Another one is, uh, another avenue to do your research to collect information is doc our documents. Documents cover from everything from medicinal bottle, you know, bottle of a particular medicine that has been uh, uh, conjured up by a particular tribe in Pahang, in the Pendalaman Tiga, you know, they, 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 they do, do some medicine. And just to study medicine is cultural studies also, it'd be interesting, okay, uh, to turn medicine into music, okay. So anyway, uh, documents can go from medicine to comic books, uh, to internet, you know, electronic e-document, to Googling, to television, to, um, 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 to books, the normal printed out textbooks, or even letters, or even government documents. You know, sometimes it's interesting. You know, I mean, I, I, I thought probably it'd be interesting to study the, uh, what do you call it, the infrastructure of a city. Let's say if I take the infrastructure of Selangor, okay, or a, in a particular area, for example, Brickfields, I go to the government's, um, um, a, the map, I, I want to call it uh, cart cartographers. Cartographers are whereby they study the maps, you know, to study the ancient maps, the, how, what, what Malaysia was, the Malay map in Selangor area. And probably I'll take the grid, the structure of that map and how it develops through time and use that as a musical, music materials for my music. Okay, from map, I decide to interpret a map into music. Um, Stockhausen did that probably. Yeah, Stockhausen did that with stars. Okay, the man or the stars. Uh, he he poked holes and then uh, music came out from it. Okay, so um, after you've gathered information, go to the outside the field, you know, get interview people, talk to the people, and you know, write down, you know, what they say. Okay, in their words, do not put your words this way. So this way, you keep it pure. It's you know their words. Or uh, you observe, okay, when you observe what you do, take a video or you can just write down what you see, okay, we, we call this, uh, uh, take a memo with you, uh, a mem little, little book, exercise book, we call it critical analytic memo, you know, it's a critical memo, uh, whereby you take down, uh, take down notes, but they are critical notes, okay, critical notes meaning you reflect upon what's going on uh, on that day. Okay, after you have all this information, put on your table all the medicine bottles, all the maybe hocus pocus, all the stones that you gather from the people, or maybe maps, you know, or maybe letters that you got from this uh, old lady, uh, want to read her letters, get the nuances and turn that to music, uh, into a vocal piece, or, you know, I don't know, um, uh, uh, or um, all the information data, put it on a table, reflect on this information. So in the academia, when we reflect what we call this as we analyze it and we interpret it, okay? I will not show you how to analyze, how to interpret. that's all uh, uh, too technical. So one way of reflecting the information is think about the information and, and look at it again and see anything interesting that you can see from the information and then take down a second level of information, second level of notation. So you have the raw data, raw information, and then from the raw information, you translate that, you know, into your information, okay? What do you, what do you see? So now is where you as a researcher can't, goes in, comes in. Before that, you don't exist. Only the voices of the people, the games, their cooking or animals you're looking at into the particular animal of a particular state, those are the voices of the, those are the raw data. When you get all that, then you as a composer and researcher come in and start doing your goring, you know, start to goring, start to piece things together, okay? Write down a critical reflection about what you see, what you think, da -di -da -di -da. don't compose yet, okay? So after doing that, generate ideas based on your previous processes. Okay, okay, it's interesting that, um, what was it I saw just now? Uh, it's interesting how uh, 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 this uh, Tamil lady stock, you know, in the rubber estate <laughs> in Perak, in the particular kampung. The way they talk, the rhythm of their talk, the Tamil language is one of the fastest language in the world. So I just like to see their inflection and the vocal inflection. I can use that as a percussive sound for percussion. And then probably have it, uh, percussion and viola, you know, viola probably very percussive throughout, you know, probably. Uh, so ideas starts to be generated. How do you can link your creative ideas to the 
outcome of your research? Or how do you link the outcome of research to ideas? So start to start to link things up. Okay. Um, all right. Having said all that, uh, now I will give an example of a piece of mine. Uh, I don't have a live recording of this. This piece is written for a uh, wind ensemble. It's for the high winds. Um, I forgot the name of the uh, oboists from 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 MPO. I, Adeline, I think I remember the oh, oboist. used used. Yes. 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 So I just used. saw him yesterday. Oh, he did? Just <laughs> right. oh, he's, he's in Singapore now, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So he's ensemble in, in, in Kuala Lumpur. That time was known as the High Winds Ensemble, if I'm not mistaken. So he asked for this uh, a piece. So this was written for the, the ensemble. It's a piece for flutes, oboes, clarinets, bassoons, uh, based on the song, folk song, Suri Ram. All right. So what approach do I want? So the first thing is is approach. Okay. So what approach do I want to? I'm inspired by the song Suri Ram. Fine. Okay. So now I'm gonna apply Suri Ram to method. So what approach I want to do go about doing this? Okay. Probably I'm going to go into not the music per se. Okay. I'm going to start going to the documents. Documents about Suri Ram. Um. See, I'm a very textual person. I like text. Okay. Not so much on sound because sound I've been dealing for for the rest of my life for the next rest of my life for the previous life too. Probably I'm swaying more towards the text. Okay. So Suriram as a text, fine. Uh, so this is the this is a document I got online. There are many many documents. This is called Soleram. It's quite interesting. Um, and this is one of the many 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 documents that one can gather. Of, I mean, there are hundreds of score uh, versions of this piece. Okay, uh, and 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 it's interesting that you know. Um, uh, the, the key that they choose. Okay, any folk song does not have a particular key. And interesting thing about folk song is they do not have a creator composer. Okay, so my approach is search in documents for creative ideas that can be used relating to the origins of the song. Okay, so based on this approach, I go into the literature, into the documents. So I found this is a sample of what I found. So Soleram or Suriram, also known as Soreram, Suriram is also a folk song from Riau, Indonesia. It is also known, it's a well-known folk song in English. So I don't do anything. I just gather this data. I just gather this information and just say, mm -hmm, okay, okay, take it, take it, take it. All right. Whether it is related or, you know, distant related, take it. All right. So there is, a, uh, there's, I always, okay, for me, I will always cite the source where it comes from so that I can go back to it. And then there's the Miriam Makeba, uh, the, this uh, a, a person recorded Suli Ram after hearing it from the Malay Indonesian uh, descendants of the slaves that were brought in Africa. This is so interesting. They were Malay uh, diaspora, okay, who uh, were dropped off in Africa by the Dutch as a, um, a, a, a as a, as I, I don't know whether to call it, but I don't like to use the punishment as a as one of the events. I would call it. Um, and the Malays over there also know the song of Suliram. So there are many, many literature, many documents have many, many versions of the title Suliram, Suliram, Soreram, Suliram, um, and many ideas about it's Malay, it is Indonesia, it is from Riau, and it, it is from, it's just like Negaraku, there's, there's never ending, you can research about Negaraku, it comes from everywhere. Okay, so culture, that's on a side note, culture does not come from a particular source, it is multiple. So I like that idea of the multiplicity of culture, the multiplicity of the song. So what I do, so I reflect on the information. Based on all this information, I start to reflect on it, look back on it, analyze it, interpret it. Okay, you don't use the word analyze, okay? So you use the word reflecting. So I discover, okay, there's Riau, there's word Malay, there's Malay Indonesian, slaves, Africa. There's Soleram, Suriram, Soleram, Suriram, etc. And there's so many more information that you know I put in my document. But these are just samples, okay, a little extract of the research uh, uh, that I do. So based on this information, I looked at it. Goodness, okay, this this concept, this idea of multiple and non-singular. I kind of like this, you know, things being multiple or non-singular. It this does not necessarily have to relate to Suriram. It can relate to any other uh, cultural products or anything, object or subject in the world, all right? So, but this multiple and non-singular idea, I would like to associate it with Suriram folk song directly, uh, uh, closely in this context. So multiple and non-singular, okay, I already got this idea. So what do I do? So general idea based on this non-singular, I have an approach already. So, okay, non-singular, non-singular, non-singularity. So 
Um, one of the ideas I can have have multiple modes. Okay. Um, do I want to have tone? tone? Do I do I atonal? Do I do I want tone tone? So probably let's say I have multiple notes. Okay. The notion of uh, multiplicity, the idea of variance within the similar heterophony. Take the one melody and have them um, uh, uh, perform in various points of time. So we have a heterophony section. So the first one I deal with multiplicity, non singularity in terms of the uh, in terms of the modes, in terms of the harmonic language. The second one, in terms of the musical texture. Okay, heterophony in the musical texture. Okay, then I got musical texture already. Um, then I will have various derived from the singular texture, highly contrapuntal. Okay, I develop heterophony further into highly a highly contrapuntal piece. Uh, and then I play around with contrapuntal and homophony. Okay, heterophony, homophony um, um, uh, 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 dialogue. Okay. So um, then I start to do research into all the 16th century uh, contrapuntalists, uh, the, 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 the North Europeanists, um, the Netherlanders, and then I go into, you know, I start to research into the uh, counterpoint of, let's say, uh, Gamelan pieces, you know, what kind of uh, uh, rhythm are they into, blah, 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 blah. So all those uh, side research will contribute towards my idea of contrapuntal homophony. Okay, all right. Build a concept on this. Not... Okay, so what happens is the music slowly from from very highly contrapuntal. I got this singular idea whereby the music, I thought, sure, this six seven minutes long, the piece from highly contrapuntal slowly start to settle down to become homophonic. So towards the end, people ask me, how come you don't go all the way to make the the, the music become monophony, right? At the end, you know, I said no, because if monophony symbolically, uh, there is no single origin of the song. So I would still want to keep it to multiple origins. So that's still homophony. And, um, you know, it's still one song moving. Uh, homophony is moving in the same direction, but in, in various levels, okay? So there is still unit singular there, but there's variance within singular. Okay, I kind of like this symbolic idea. Fine. So um, so what I do is I take the song apart, Suriram apart. I reduce the Suriram melody to its minimal and its essence through a process and then after that I piece it together okay so what I call this is a deconstructive deconstruction it's a reverse deconstruction whereby I take the piece apart okay I present it to I present to the ears as broken down and slowly the piece start to you know form together right towards the end you can hear Suri Ram start to come and uh, you start to hear Suri Ram but not exactly Suri Ram say towards the end so it's kind of a haunting ghostly by the time you sort of recognize it's gone okay so uh it, it's a it's a symbolic idea of you know culture the origin is you it's never tangible you cannot hold it but you think you know where it is but it's it, it's just ungraspable okay so it's uh symbolic in that aspect okay so now i got the ideas that has been generated based on my research results i will attempt the composition and then I'll see whether, what are the results, okay? So uh, I don't have my sketches maybe, but this is the score, all right. So even the title itself, I decided to incorporate my research, uh, the title based on the research. So I found this sentence by an uh, Argentinian uh, writer by the name of uh, uh, Borges. And he's, one of his texts, he says that he too a simulacrum that another person was dreaming. Uh, person was dreaming. It's actually based on the person is a dream of someone else's dream, okay? And that person in someone else's dream is actually the dream of someone else's dream. So the dream goes on and on and on. So, so it sort of uh, have two meanings to it. Dreaming here because Suri Ram is a lullaby. So it's kind of, fit, kind of fitting to have the word dreaming there because it's a lullaby. And a simulacro means uh, it's like, uh, it, it, it's an image. Okay, it's it, it, it's simulation, it is not real. So uh, then again, it goes symbolically with the idea of the music, which is no single reality. This piece has no single reality, no singular, singularity also. So the title there also reflect uh, um, um, the objectives of the research and the whole ideas of, of um, uh, my approach. Okay, uh, so this is the music. Uh, the opening is you, you sort of see Suriram, but you don't see it. It is sort of distorted. Uh, it is the essence of Suriram. Um, I don't have sketches really because I, I will have no time to 934. I have no time to show the sketches, you know, how I go about. Maybe I can, I can, I'm giving a talk again later part this year. Uh, it's about close to an hour and two hours talk, and then I'll elaborate it there on all this piece again. 
So here is Hari Kontrapantel uh, and Melayu, you know, sometimes, you know, the, the lingo lingo, they are not very, you know, um, Saka Dodoi. Dodoi is, is not, uh, is, is not, a, a, mother sings lullaby and they never, they're never on time. You know, I listen to the way they sing, the inflection, they're never on time, they're always out of tune. Okay, and yet, you know, it sounds nicer, lullaby which is out of tune than lullaby which is in tune. Lullaby are not supposed to be sung by opera singers. They're supposed to be sung by natural mothers or fathers. Okay, or sisters to their younger son and brother. Okay, so all this concept I incorporated into this music, um, and uh, um, and uh, the, I've just taken about uh, um, four pages out of maybe thirty pages of the score. Okay, so we get to hear a little bit of the music on the next page. Uh, it's seven minutes long. I won't play all of them. I just played the opening. Oh, by the way, this is MIDI. It is horrible. The sound is really, really horrible. So forgive the MIDI. Slowly, slowly become homophonic. Uh, and the cycle happens again, happens again, again. And well, towards the end, till towards the end, um, you the suri, this is towards the end of the piece. Uh, finally, it throws into the surira melody. Okay, as I marked over here. Um, and it is a distorted suriram um, and homophonic texture, right? Till the end. So finally, the contrapuntal texture is gone and it's uh, it's completely taken over by the homo uh, homophonic texture, with a more clearer version of the surira melody, but not exactly of the of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, pitches pitch ranges. Okay. So um, hold on. I think I'm, I've spoken too fast. Okay. All right. To conclude. Okay. Um, research for creative works is actually researching for information in order to get idea to get creative ideas okay it's a form of searching it's a form of looking for um to undo why do we need uh, what is research that's the first one why do we need to research we need to undo these assumptions regarding subject object research if we becoming just an armchair researcher without going out there or without even opening up the videos or without even making phone calls or without even reading uh is quite it's quite dangerous no i would say dangerous it's quite not so nice because you tend to become ethnocentric meaning that you tend to assume based on your own understanding what the piece is like um, but ethnocentric is not always bad because there are a lot of artwork which is based on ethnocentric uh, uh, uh perspective okay you can say that oh okay this is my take on that you know um, and that, well, it's fine actually if you do so that means uh, you are aware of, of of such an approach which is fine um i i'm used to take a lot of indian teams and indian stories and and i get criti criticized in a constructive way why do i use indian team and appropriate it in the malay language for a malay uh, musical theater i would say that uh because the malay uh, is actually was once Hindu and and they, they are very much ingrained with the uh, Hindu culture. So that India culture is was and is still very much ingrained in the Malaya Peninsula. 
So that was my justification and they said, okay, okay, fine. All right, so ethnocentrism uh, is okay if you are aware, okay? Um, the creative process, well, uh, some might, uh, ethnomusicologists might go against me, but say ethnocentrism is a very, very bad thing, but unfortunately, Fortunately, unfortunately, um, a lot of artworks are actually based on ethnocentrism. For example, um, Madame Butterfly, the opera, is written by Italian men about Japanese women, you know, um, or, 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 or French written, writing about Indian women also. Okay, um, creative process and work can be more informed. I mean, why do we do research? So that your creative process, your creative uh, approach, your creative techniques can be more informed by what you look out for okay you can actually look into books and read books that is fine but okay one more thing that i forgot to mention is what we call in the academy is triangulation triangulation triangle meaning if you hear the gossip from this person you don't just accept the gossip from this person you must go and check out with the second person to see whether the gossip is true gossip and then you ask the third person okay so the third person will be able to you know give more information you know if the first person say a is correct uh, second person says B is correct, you know, so it's um, um, what do you call it? Draw. Okay, if the third person says A is correct, so you have two A's against one B, so you, you can conclude the, the research, in other words. So always triangulate. Three, three, three minimal is quite good. So triangulation can also mean uh, you read the information from the document, from a textbook, from a storybook, from a novel, and then stop there. Okay, but it will be just uh, no, more interesting that you can even go out there to speak to the person who wrote the book or maybe speak to the people that have read the book or know about the book or speak uh, or, or even observe the people who are reenacting the play based on the book uh, or um, uh, uh, what do you call it or actually um, 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 talk you know talk to a group or a single person all right just to triangulate to con triangulation basically means uh, to confirm the information. Okay, I think I've spoken so fast. Eh? Okay, uh, thank you. This is it for now. Adeline, that's yeah. it. I will open up for Q&A. Okay. Well, perhaps you know you know you you're such a, an expert in this field, researching and applying it to your creative works. Perhaps for some some of us who are not so um, used to this idea of research, very simply, okay, let's just take for example the folk song that you did. You know, so I think you know that that would be one of a very common um, reference. I think we can find in terms of traditional because uh, there's melodies. You know. There's many, many melodies and arrangements make from folk song. So let's say we just take that, Johan. And what is the simplest way without going into too much, um, you know, if we don't have that experience to, and the technique to do it, let's say, and we don't have the means to travel. Let's say I want to write a song based on, um, you know, uh, Perlis, let's say. I don't have the opportunity to travel to Perlis. So I do the armchair research thing where I sit and Google. Yeah. Are there any other methods so that, you know, it, it's not just sitting, I mean, interviewing, yes, but, you know, perhaps something simple for, for us to kind of reflect on how do we go about so that it's not just an arrangement. Um, I think for one thing you did was a song, you transferred it into wind instruments and winds use air and breath. And that kind of um, relates to singing because we use that as well. So it was that one way of you trying to con connect the element of singing with breathing through wind instruments and you didn't choose strings, let's say. You didn't take um, piano, you didn't take strings, you, you, you chose wind instruments. So perhaps was that one connection that you wanted to relate to a song, but not literally write a song. Okay, so yeah, that uh, actually I chose that piece because it's one of the most literal, uh, literal. The idea is very literal, yeah, uh, and it's not very uh, uh, um, symbolic. Um, so it is quite straightforward. I think that's one of my most straightforward pieces that I've I've written. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, it, being simple is also very challenging. How to I know how to keep it simple at the same time. I uh, don't be complex for the sake of being complex, you know. And then you have you find, and, yeah. Uh, but the thing is, you know. Uh, uh, 
researching and composition is a form of uh, a process of finding out. As you are composing, sometimes the okay, this is another good thing to 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 point out. The result is not necess, does not necessarily have to be um, what I conceived in the beginning. Whoa, that sounds you know not like how I thought it sounds. So it's up to you whether you want to accept it or not. You know, say okay, you know I will stop there. Okay, I'm fine with that sound. Or else it will, the process still goes on. Find other way if you want to distort the sound or not distort the sound. Okay, for those of you still new with this idea of research and you cannot travel far, uh, it's okay. It's still fine. Um, some of these uh, folks, folk people, or not even folk, even you want to study about you know um, modern culture, for example, how uh, how the uh, fast pace of metropolitan life. Okay, so it's in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, it's fine. It's there at the doorstep. But what if you want to go to Perlis as you know, and you want to actually absorb the nuances of the Perlis or Alostar, you know, Perlis itself? Uh, I think you know, if you, the best, of course, to be there. If not, then you take the next best thing. Of course, find out people from Perlis. You know, Facebook. Now with the internet, you know, it's 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 every it's everything's at the fingertips. Facebook, find people who are from Perlis. Can I have a cup of coffee with you? Can I um can I can I talk to you on the phone? Um, uh, in fact, you know, one of my students, uh, Eddie, in fact, you know, asking look for a 50 cent coin because I want to take for an article I'm writing. And he's just put on Facebook, said, I'm looking for 50, 50 cent coin of 20 years ago. In one day, people come out and say, look, I have, you know, this coin for you. So don't worry, in, in, in Facebook, Instagram, everywhere, just ask, they will come. I says, any anyone who is from Perlis, who is living in Kuala Lumpur, Petaling Jaya, uh, in my neighborhood. Can I have a cup of coffee with you? Can I phone with you? I want to hear your voice. Can you speak? There will be, believe me, research, search. You ask people want to tell their stories. They, they would love. They would, When it comes about them, they just want to tell you. So um, one way is, um, and don't worry about ideas. You know, Just do it. Sit down. When the person talk, 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 record the person's voice down. Or you know, get some questions ready. Uh, questions relating to uh, um, 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 you know what you want to know. Okay, so before you interview, there's two ways of interviewing. One is you are very structured, meaning that you set, sit down and uh, determine what we want to ask. Another one, you know, they call it open ended, whereby you just sit down, go with the flow. You know, uh, what you want to ask, you ask. What you want to ask, you ask. What you ask. So you go along with the speaker. You know, you and then lo and behold, ideas will start to come. Okay. Um, so the beauty about researching is, or searching is, gather the information and don't think. Gather the information. The information is highly potent, of highly potential resources for ideas. Okay. Sometimes there are two kinds of idea, idea ways of applying ideas. One is you have an idea, you want to impose it onto the uh, material that you are gathered. Another one is you have no idea, which is okay. That's I like that. It's being lost. So with no idea. You get the information, put it on the table, look at it, stop doing your research, and this is where you start to reflect back. Look, 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 think, 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 look, 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 think, think, think. Aha, this is it. I got something there. Okay. So that what the first way is more towards uh, um, imposing your idea. The second way is no idea. I want to gully an idea, derive an idea based on the on the information. So the second one I think is should be quite suitable for anyone who have no research background, you know. It's okay to be lost in the very beginning because that's the whole fun. Oh, that's a fundamental of research is you must be lost. The minute you enter research, very knowledgeable, that is not research. That's no, there's no point researching. You cannot go into research extremely knowledgeable. Okay, you have knowledge, but then there's some aspect that you completely do not know. Okay, so uh, based on my knowledge, I, I'm going to find a gap in that knowledge. I want to fill in the gap. So, uh, uh, so that's the whole beauty about, about researching is actually uh, to know. Okay, from don't know to know. So you must don't know first and then after that to know. So once you get to know uh, and then, you know, slowly, slowly, uh, always reflect back, reflect back. Never look ahead. You look ahead, you will not get ideas. You have to look back at what you have. So I have seen a lot of creative researchers in the theater, what we do is we call it device play. I've done some musical theaters. I've done music for theaters. Uh, some directors, they call it device play, whereby there are no scripts, no stories, nothing. Okay. So the material comes from the actors. Uh, the director, what they, he does or she does is he asks the actor to go out, you know, like in Georgetown, Pina, and you go out and talk to people. 
talk to the people on the streets. They come back with all kinds of stories and they will sit down for weeks, for days, or maybe hours, sit down and see what aspect of the stories they can take as creative ideas. Oh, this lady likes to um, uh, uh, eat starchy stuff. Oh, that person likes to eat rice. Oh, that person loves to hear, listen to this song. So when it comes to the actor, okay, with the word rice, what kind of gesture you can come up with? So the, the, the dancer, the actor came up with this word, pinch of rice. So this is a gesture, it's a motif. So every time the actor will take out the hand and do that, that's a motif of rice. Then you already have a vocabulary, okay, and moving with the rice. So another one with stickiness, another actor says, okay, how do I portray stickiness? Probably I do this. Okay, so every time the actor does this, it's a form of stickiness. So I have to come up with a musical equivalent to this. You see, a motif that I gather from the, the world outside. Uh, the best one I could, would recommend is called ethnographic, ethnography. The second one is called phenomenal research design. Uh, ethnography is, ethno is the word for people. Graphy means the, the, the study of. So ethnography is actually, you're studying the culture of the people through the people. You're not studying the people. So if I want to study about chongkak game, the chongkak game of these villages, okay, these, uh, these kids in this particular village, everyone plays chongkak differently throughout Malaysia. So I want to study how the chongkak is structured, the game is structured. I'll use that structure as, 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 as the starting point for everything in my music, from the motifs to the entire structural piece, the way the gesture of the strings will move, okay? So um, what I, uh, ethnography is, I have to go and speak to the people in order to get to their culture. Nothing to do with the people, it's to the culture. So that's ethnographic. Use the people, I use, hate to use the word use. Go through the people, access the culture through the people. Okay, but phenomenology studies is you're studying the phenomenal, the, 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 the happening is you are studying about fishermen. Well, not the culture of fishermen, but the fishermen themselves. Uh, fishermen that's going through a process of uh, dying, dying away. You know, the fishing is dying away right now, okay? So the, the traditional way of fishing. So I'm going through the, the, the phenomenon of the fishermen or the ex, someone's experience where, where it comes to tango dancing in Malaysia, okay? Tamil tango or Tamil hip hop, the Tamil, Tamil way of uh, uh, dancing the tango in, 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 in Klang Valley, okay? So I want to study about that phenomenon, not the person. So that is called phenomenology. So academicizing a composition, one of the best research design, the safest one is ethnography. Now, the word culture, don't be afraid with the word culture. Culture does not mean it has to be a dance, it has to be a song, it has to be a, a food, you know, it has to be with the ethnic, the people. Culture can be everything as culture, even, you know, um, um, uh, even a handphone is a culture, okay? Culture means anything, everything that has, that we live, we used to live, that we are living inside. Even, even putting on my glasses is a form of culture. Okay, culture is actually ways of thinking of a particular person, of a particular person. A, per, a culture can be singular, meaning that the culture of that person, a culture can be a group, a collective, meaning the culture of the kampong or the village. A culture, I would love to actually take an ethnographic design, an ethnographic research design of the, uh, the monks in uh, the, uh, the, the, the Chinese temple of the goddess of mercy in Pula Pinang, the temple, how the monks or the, uh, or, or the, uh, or the, um, of the, uh, how would say the, uh, the guardians of the temple, how they pray, you know, how they use dropsy. I would like to observe that and use that as a materials for composition or maybe an opera, who, know, who knows? So, uh, okay, I hope that answers Dr. Farouk's question, yeah? In research, there is nothing that is not researchable, okay? Um, um, so when it comes to paranormal, you know, don't apply our biasness. Oh, okay, that's not real. Ghosts don't exist and all that. Okay, if ghosts don't exist, people do talk about ghosts. There are culture, there are ghost stories are very, very much ingrained in a culture. Um, and, and paranormal, is it real or not? Okay, as a researcher, we cannot be biased in the sense of, you know, we apply our judgment to say that, oh, okay, it's not real. So um, researcher that go into the safari, to research about how lions eat the gazelle, okay, how lions eat small creatures. Suddenly, the researchers saw the lion start to bite gazelle, fell so bad, take the gun and shoot the lion to kill the lion. That's absolutely bad because you know uh, you are tempering with nature. And then the whole research 
idea of research will be gone because your object of study is gone. You know, you step into it. So do not step into the research uh, with the judgment to say, okay, this is not real, this is real. Put aside those uh, biases and uh, or a judgment. Take down the data. If the person say it is real, note down the word. But uh, uh, according to Mr. A, paranormal uh, uh, ghosts in this town are real. Okay. According to the auntie, say that mm, it's real, but maybe not. Okay. You write down real, but maybe not. So there is there's a sense of fluctuation. Okay. Uh, I, I had a play. It's called uh, A City with No Ghosts. It's no city at all. And actually, the, the play is not big. There are no ghosts in that play. So everyone was disappointed when it comes to play, there's no ghosts. So actually, it's, it's symbolic. So to answer your question, um, uh, uh, I cannot say yes or no. Keep on researching. Keep on finding out. See people's opinion, okay, whether they think, what do they think about ghosts? Are they real or paranormal? Are they real or not real? Fine. You know, um, uh, at the end, the results, you just need to record down how the people actually perceive the world, okay? You cannot go to an interview and the person says, you know what, you know, I think, you know, I saw a ghost line, and then you interrupt the interview and say, you know, uncle, ghosts don't exist, lah. you know, why, why you say ghosts exist? You, you are doing unethical stuff, you are imposing into the subject matter. So if the uncle say, I see 10 ghosts last night, even though you think the uncle is lying, don't apply that, say that the uncle saw 10 ghosts last night. This is, a, this is the, the truth which has been uh, uh, established by the uncle. Okay, does, did, did that answer your question? Yes, thank you, Dr. Johan. You're most welcome. Very simply, it's just to, uh, it's just to uh, 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 satisfy your curiosity because it's not enough to compose based on our inspiration. Aren't you curious about that bird? Aren't you curious about that game? That, aren't you curious about that? So, okay, to put it very simply, research is extremely beautiful because you know why? You are giving the voice to the other rather than you are speaking for the other, okay? If you want to research about, you know, a, a, a particular bird, a particular society, culture, a particular, particular country, a town, you give that thing the voice. Don't, you know, read and, okay, I think, you know. So find out, be curious, have this desire to know about the other. So the beauty of art is to place oneself in the position of the other. Curious about this other person. Curious about the other. This thing which is outside that we do not know about. And then you'll be surprised you will grow. You will grow as an artist, you know, by absorbing the other. Thank you so much, Johan. And um, yeah, so um, everyone, I hope you all uh, enjoyed the talk by Johan. And if there's um, further questions you would like to ask, you can uh, drop us an email on the email you have from the form. Um, yeah, so I wish everyone a good night and all the best in your research and composition. And we really look forward to, to reading the research. Thank you very much. Thanks, okay. Johan. All right. Thanks, Adeline.